Hi there. I'm Walter de Portre. I'm responsible for enterprise IT architecture at Corrid Group. At Corrid Group, we're dead serious about enterprise architecture. We even created our very own company for it, Mirias Corrid Group Enterprise Architects. What I'll be sharing with you today through this online keynote is how we look at enterprise architecture at Corrid Group, why we think it matters, and how we use it to keep an edge over competition. I'll wrap up the keynote by sharing those five key success factors we found out to matter the most along our journey. I'm not going to switch on my camera in order to not distract you so you can fully focus on the content of the slides and the voiceover. All right, are you ready for it? Here we go. Corrid Group is a family business that has grown into a retail group with more than 30,000 employees and a diverse portfolio of food and non-food formats, and that in Belgium, in France, and in Luxembourg. We're most famous for our food retailing, but we're also active in non-food, in fuel, in wholesale, and in food service. In recent years, we have also grown strongly as both a producer and a supplier of renewable wind and solar energy. It is typical of Corrid Group that we continue to do many things ourselves. We possess a wealth of experience and expertise in areas such as technology and IT, as well as production and packaging of meat, coffee, wine and cheese, for example. At Corrid Group, we want to make a positive difference with everything we do. At every stage of life and at all key moments in our customers' lives, we want to be there for them in a sustainable and suitable way. So what is enterprise architecture? Well, different people have different ideas about that. And of course, both words, enterprise and architecture, had been around for many years, each having meaning on their own, before somebody combined them together into enterprise architecture. John Zachman of IBM did that back in the day, back in 1987. And Zachman looked at EA as that thing that bridges strategy and implementation. It then took Gardner another 20 years to ratify a standard definition for it. And believe it or not, that Gardner definition, which is now on the screen, is still very much up to date. The definition tells you that enterprise architecture is a process, it's a collaborative and iterative process of translating the business vision and the business strategy into effective enterprise change. Change being the key word here. And that's what we as enterprise architects still try to do each and every day. Based on that definition, the core mission for the enterprise architects would be to enable changes, to allow business transformation. In essence, what it boils down to is that it is all about helping the business and the IT decision makers make deliberate and documented choices by providing direction and structure to the purpose of the business vision and strategy. So why do we need enterprise architecture at Corrid Group? Well, Corrid Group grew from a family business into a family of businesses. And just like in any normal family, the sister companies in Corey Group, they don't all do the same thing. Some are active in food area, some are in non-food, for example. Nevertheless, they all do sing from the same song sheet, which is our identity, our common DNA. And this translates into a mission statement, which is now on the screen here, a mission statement in which all store formulas, brands and services can recognize themselves. Together, we create sustainable added value through value-driven craftsmanship in retail, together being the key word here. Now, it was a deliberate choice we made to organize and steer our group as a family, but it's not necessarily an easy choice. Because of it, we want to be doing a number of things together and in certain ways. We aim at creating synergies and efficiencies within that group. And that's where having the discipline of enterprise architecture really helps. Trying to balance the local autonomy of the business unit with the synergies at the group level. Next to creating synergies and efficiencies, it's also our mission as enterprise architects to make the thing 
less complex. We need to drive out complexity and we may need to make the whole more agile so that we can react faster and more easily. Because nowadays we operate in a world which is characterized by increasing levels of volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. You know, the VUCA world. In such a VUCA world, you can no longer plan ahead for many years to come and then just stick to that plan. You need to be able to react faster to ever more changes. And so to be able to do that, we need to develop the right capabilities that will allow us capturing opportunities as they come along, as and when they pop up, often unexpectedly. So what we need to do is, is, is we need to build that flexibility, that agility into the very core of our architecture so that we can adapt it more easily in the future. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we abandoned at Corrid Group, we abandoned approaching enterprise architecture as a jigsaw puzzle and we went for a tongram instead. You see, the problem with the jigsaw puzzle is that there is only one way in which you can correctly lay your puzzle. The pieces can be used only in a very specific way, in a very specific place in the whole. Also, the pieces typically come in a box and on that box it's a picture of what your end result should look like. Now, for years, enterprise architecture has been approached as very rich, very complex, very elaborate jigsaw puzzles. Now the tongram, that's a different story. With a tongram, many different figures can be made up using the same pieces in different ways. The pieces are loosely coupled and they're easily reusable or interchangeable. Changes to one of the pieces does not necessarily require changes to the others. So tongram pieces allow for real agility. You could easily take out one piece of the cat figure there and replace it by another of another color or by two smaller pieces without having to mess up the overall figure. Now, once we had that insight, we started building our core group business capability landscape as a tongram with business capabilities as the tongram pieces, unique and independent building blocks that can be used in one or more value streams for one or more operating units, store formulas, brands, or services. For example, the supply chains of Corit Laste Prijzen, OK, and View Planet, we will set up those core processes and systems once, but then the execution remains separate and slightly different per business unit. That's where the fun and the challenge is, to come up with the right set of tangram pieces so that we can build up the value chains of our multiple business units as we know and love them today, but also for those of tomorrow, which we have yet to invent. Enterprise architecture is a multi-dimensional practice. It needs to be both business and IT. It can't be just either of the two. It needs to be both. At Corrid Group, we have a two-sided model. We have the business side of enterprise architecture, where we will work with components and processes and information concepts. And then you also have the IT side or the technology side of enterprise architecture, where we will have the applications, the data, the infrastructure. We avoided stepping into the term hijack of narrowing EA to just the IT technology part. No, EA is also about process and people. Our business capability, our core building block of our architecture, includes everything we need to carry out a specific set of activities, like supply chain for food business, for instance. It contains the IT applications, such as an ERP system, but it also it contains the business functions, the work processes, the information flows, and even the craftsmanship of the people executing those business functions. Also, enterprise architects at Corey Group have a role to play at all three levels, not just the strategic level, but also the tactical and even the operational level. We make them responsible for their architecture. 
in order to close the feedback loop and make sure that we're doing what we intended to be doing, but also to capture the insights from the real world and reflect that back into our architecture models going forward. Okay, some key success factors which we found to be of the utmost importance along our uh, journey into enterprise architecture. And mind you, some of those, most of those, we learned the hard way. First of all is the ownership. Enterprise architecture needs to be business driven and business owned. What enterprise architects do is we provide leadership services to the business executives. But it's those business executives that are the real architects of the enterprise because they have the power to invest in changes that reshape or restructure the enterprise. One should not confuse the role called enterprise architect with the executives being accountable for the delivery and the performance of the enterprise. A second lesson we learned is you need to focus on added value. Your EA, your enterprise architecture, needs to be just. It needs to be just enough, not too much, not too little. It needs to be just in time, and it needs to be justified. Focus on what, what matters most for your business and demonstrate clear added value. We learned this the hard way. The first model we made up, the business components model, we also heavily invested in a complete and all-encompassing model, and then what do we do with it? When we started building up our business capability landscape, we made sure that we had the big framework, but then we started completing that as and where we need it. By focusing on those capabilities we needed at that time or where we had the maturity. Mandate and role. Be clear on the mandate and the role. Be explicit about what you will do, when, how and why, but also what you will not be doing. And talk the walk. Tell the people, communication is key. You need to close the feedback loop. To connect your plans and models with reality and vice versa. I found EA to be much stronger when it thrives on collaboration and influence rather than dictation and control. And last but not least, the soft skills, or better, leadership skills. Leadership skills are key for the effective enterprise architect. That's really where we make the difference. Our methodology is great, for sure, but it's through our architects that we make the difference at Colored Group. We're reaching the end of the keynote. I hope what you saw gives you a better understanding of what enterprise architecture is or what it should be and how it can be used. And by sharing those five key success factors, I wanted to give you guys a head start in your journey because most of those lessons we had to figure out the hard way. Thank you.